we are going to go over the August 2022 Chemistry Regions Exam Part A. Part A consists of predominantly definitions, facts. We're going to be going to the reference tables just a little bit, but it's minimal compared to the other parts of the test. Question one, what is the number of protons in an atom with the electron configuration of? Well, if the electron configuration is 2-5, it means, of course, the total number of electrons is 7. And since it's an atom and protons equal electrons, our answer would be choice 4, which is 7 protons. For question 2, in the wave mechanical model of the atom, an orbital is defined as. Here's one of those places where we need to know the definition of an orbital. And that is a region of the most probable electron location, which is choice two. Question three, in the ground state, which shell of a potassium atom has an electron with the greatest amount of energy? Well, this is a typical regions question where they don't give you the symbol for potassium, yet you're going to look on the periodic table. If you do not know the symbol for potassium is a capital K, go to reference table S and look it up. Don't be lazy, and when you're practicing, practice as if you are actually taking the test. Let's check out the periodic table. We find potassium here in group 1, 2, dash 8, dash 8, dash 1. I have two electrons in the first level, eight in the second, eight in the third, and one in the fourth. The one in the fourth, fourth principal energy level has the most energy, and that is our answer. Going on to number four, which phrase describes two atoms that contain the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons? Hopefully you recognize, and if you don't, make sure you memorize it. This is the definition for isotopes. For number five, all atoms of an element must have the same. They must have the same number of protons. The number of protons we get, of course, from the atomic number. And that also, we can get the number of protons from the symbol of the element. For question six, which group 15 element is classified as a metal? Let's check out the periodic table once again. All right, we're checking out group 15. And group 15 starts with nitrogen and phosphorus. Both of these are nonmetals. And nonmetals are above arsenic and antimony, which are our semi-metals. And then we have bismuth as our metal. That's going to be our answer. There it is, choice number four for question six. For question seven, compared to the number of electron shells and the radius of an aluminum atom in the ground state, boron atom in the ground state has. Electron shells, size, we need to go to the periodic table once again. Comparing the size of boron and the size of aluminum with atomic radius, we could go to reference table S and look up the values, but it's going to be fairly easy to see also here looking at the electron configurations. Aluminum is bigger in size than boron because it has eight electrons between the first and the third principal energy level, where boron only has 2-3. So boron has two principal energy levels and aluminum has three. Boron is smaller in size also than aluminum. Let's go back. So when keeping this in mind now, we're doing it from the perspective of boron. A boron atom in the ground state has fewer electron shells, so let's get rid of choices three and four, and also has a smaller radius compared to aluminum, which is choice one. The chemistry exam is as much a reading test as it is a chemistry test. So keep that in mind. Going to number eight, hydrogen sulfide. H2S is classified as. I don't see AQ in parentheses or another substance here. So we're talking about a compound, not a mixture. Let's cancel out mixture for three and four. And then if it's a compound, the proportion of hydrogen, in this case, two to one, 
does not change. For compounds, it does not vary. For mixtures, it would. The answer for question eight is one. If we go to number nine, a structural formula differs from a molecular formula in that a structural formula shows us the structure. And by showing us the structure, it is the arrangement of the atoms in that compound. All right, we are already up to question 10. We'll have a third of this done. 10, in which type of reaction occurs when a compound is separated into its elements? These four choices are the basic compound, I'm sorry, these are the basic chemistry reactions that we, we use. And when we're going to take a compound and we're going to separate it into its elements, we're breaking it down, and that is decomposition. Synthesis is the opposite of decomposition. Single replacement, you have an element and a compound as your reactants, an element and compound as your products. Double replacement, you start with two compounds, you end with two compounds. For question 11, which terms represent two categories of compounds? For compound categories, we're going to have either ionic, because there's ionic bonds, the other kind of bond is covalent, and with covalent, those are molecular compounds or molecules. Our answer then is choice four. All right, question 12. When an atom of hydrogen and an atom of chlorine combine, right, and form a molecule hydrogen chloride, a bond is. Well, if hydrogen and chlorine are bonding, obviously it's formed. Anytime bonds are formed, energy is released. It is a fact. So the answer is choice two. For 13, all atoms of the element vanadium must have the same. They must have the same number of protons, and that would be the atomic number. For 14, which sample of matter can be separated into two different substances by physical means? In other words, we have a mixture. Can't be number one, liquid bromine is just bromine. Two, gaseous propane is just the compound propane. Three, solid sodium acetate is just the salt sodium acetate. It must be four. Aqueous magnesium sulfate means you have magnesium sulfate dissolved in water, and it can be separated back out. For question 15, two liquids can be separated by distillation due to a difference in boiling point. They can be separated by physical means, which means physical constants. It's a fact. Know it. For 16, which unit can be used to express concentration of a solution? If you don't recognize which unit for concentration, then come on over to reference table T. And if we scroll down, we're going to find here is concentration. Two calculations that chemistry students are responsible for, parts per million and molarity. And sure enough, there it is, choice four, parts per million. For question 17, compared to the freezing point and boiling point of water, a 0.1, I'm sorry, a 0.5 molar aqueous solution of sodium chloride. Now, the pressures are the same, has nothing to do with it, there's no gases here. But when you dissolve something in water, it raises the boiling point and lowers the freezing point. In this case, they did it opposite what I said. So lower freezing point, get rid of three and four, and higher boiling point, which is choice two. All right, for question 18, which form of energy is converted to thermal energy when propane burns in air? This is a chemical reaction. We're talking about chemical energy being converted to thermal. It's a fact. That is choice one. For 19, according to kinetic molecular theory, which statement explains why an ideal gas can be compressed to a smaller volume? Now, no real gas is absolutely 100% ideal. We use this, however, to be able to do our calculations with the combined gas law. 
and the reason why we can compress gas particles into a smaller volume is here in choice four that the gas particles are separated by great distances relative to their size all right speaking about ideal gases again we're looking at question 20 under which conditions of temperature and pressure does a sample of propane behave least like an ideal gas so closer to a real gas closer to a real gas is going to be with low temperatures and high pressure usually they ask it the opposite way so we have to be really careful here again low temperature well we're, that means 250 and not 500 so a lot let's knock those out and high pressure meaning we're squeezing everything together is choice two for question 21 compared to a one liter sample of co2 gas in a sealed rigid container at stp one liter sample of methane ch4 in a sealed rigid container at stp has the same well they certainly would not have the same densities they are not the same molecules either so that means their molar mass is out they definitely do not have the same chemical properties because they're totally two different compounds it has to be the number of molecules as long as your volumes your temperatures and your pressures are the equal for different gases they will have equal numbers of molecules that's a fact for 22 chemical reaction occurs when remember you have to break bonds and form new bonds new substances new formulas choices one two and three are all just phase changes only choice four i'm going from o2 to o3 that is a change in the chemical structure so therefore it is a chemical reaction all right we got six more to go here um yeah six more Ugh. okay question 24 again another fact systems in nature tend to undergo changes we want lower energy states and greater disorder those two so cross out again higher energy for the choices three and four we want low energy greater disorder which is choice two for 25 which reaction occurs at the anode in an electrochemical cell again another fact that we say at the anode we have oxidation going on remember at the cathode is reduction and most of the time teachers use anox red cat for students to remember it for 26 as more sodium chloride is dissolved in a dilute unsaturated solution of sodium chloride solution the conductivity well if you're adding more salt to a solution those ions are going to break apart as long as i have moving charges i can conduct electricity the more moving charges the more we can conduct electricity so the conductivity of the solution definitely increases so cross out one and two and the conductivity also increases which is choice four all right for 27 which substance always forms when i have an arrhenius acid reacting with arrhenius base an arrhenius acid means the only positive ion in solution is h plus for an arrhenius base the only negative ion in solution you guessed it is the hydroxide ion OH minus H plus and OH minus make water finally the last three questions 28 which symbol represents a nuclear emission with the greatest mass and the greatest ionizing power well you're talking about alpha particles it is a fact alpha particles are helium nuclei two protons and two neutrons being spit out of the nucleus it does get the symbol here i call it the fish but it's the greek a the other symbols are for nuclear but they don't have the mass that an alpha particle has the most underutilized table on the reference tables is table o our symbols in nuclear chem i just brought you here so you could see alpha particles have the highest mass number 
of all the other particles here. Gamma radiation is just energy, so there is no mass. Beta particles and positrons, very, very small mass on the order of electrons. And of course, a neutron and a proton is one AMU each. One other thing to note with question 28, because alpha particles have the greatest mass, when they're colliding with things like our cells in our body, they also have the greatest ionizing power. They don't have the greatest penetration power, though. That is opposite. So they're low in penetration power, but greater in ion, ionizing power. For 29, one potential benefit of nuclear fusion. Well, you get a lot of energy. Think the sun. And that is choice three. Again, it's a fact. So nuclear fusion and nuclear Vision produce a lot of energy. And then finally, question 30, this is the last question in this part. Determine the age of a wooden beam from a sunken ship is an example of the beneficial use of, that would be radiocarbon dating, which is radioactive nuclides. Again, a fact. Part A is over. You got to know your facts. You got to know your definitions. You're working a little bit with the reference tables, predominantly the periodic table and just keep practicing go over questions go over all four par parts of the regents exam this was just part a we have b1 b2 and part c to go of course keep working hard and good luck